iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Andrew Leeds, welcome to iHeartRadio Broadway. Hi, thanks for having me. So congrats on the second season of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Um, it is such, I told Alex Noel the other day, such a wonderful, wonderful show. It breaks up the week to be able to be a part of a musical theater experience again when it comes to a television show. So what has it meant to you to watch the fan reaction week after week? Um, it's been, I mean, it's, it's really wonderful. It's, a, it's like a different kind of uh, fan reaction from other shows I've been on. Um, I would say in that I've been on shows where people have really, really, you know, like them, been on shows where people are really, really huge fans. This one seems to have a different, um, a different, uh, like a more emotional reaction um, where I feel like people seem to be moved or um, uh, maybe they relate to it in some way uh, or there's just like a sense of like, I would describe it as like a sense of warmth, I guess. Um, and joy and people just seem very grateful for that. Um, and so it's really nice to, to feel that for people. And I feel like the thing that's different about Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist than some of the other musical shows that have been on television, there's literally something for everyone. There is the Zoe, the Zoe uh, storyline, then there's your storyline with losing your father, but also having a baby, then your yeah. mom's storyline and Mo's storyline. So there really is something for everyone in this show. Yeah, it's a, it's such a, it's an incredibly diverse cast and everybody, it's kind of amazing that the show works because not only is everybody uh, very, very different. And by the way, in real life, very, you know, very, very different. Everybody is like different ages, uh, different backgrounds, different um, musical theater experience, um, uh, just every, so it's a kind of amazing. We all genuinely uh, really do like each other and get along but it's I'm always kind of surprised because I'm like God, I look around the room and I'm like wow this couldn't be a more different group of people um so uh but yeah there is there's so much there's so much uh it's also the what's interesting about the show is that it's not like a group of doctors working in a hospital it's like she it, she's the sort of the center of it and then she's got her you know her romantic relationships she's got her work life um, which used to be Max and Simon were there, but now Max is somewhere else. Um, and she's got her family life. And so there are like, it's sort of everywhere you look, there's like another story to be told. And it, it sort of does sort of hit, um, I feel like it hit, it, it can hit everybody in some right. way. Yeah. And I was gonna ask later on about the camaraderie between you all on set, because yeah. I follow you all on social, you all film in Vancouver together and you do feel like such a lovely, close-knit family group so what has that camaraderie been like to go into season two with everyone uh it's been great I mean I think um I think we especially now because of the you know COVID circumstances there's a little bit more of an element of it was different because last year we could spend more time together outside of set and even on set we could spend more time together now you're kind of if unless you're needed there you know you're not there last year yeah. I used to hang all the time um and so I think that there, so I would have thought that there would have been less, you know, maybe camaraderie or feeling of, the, of family, but in a way I feel like there's more and maybe that's because it's the second year and we're excited to be back. And, um, but I also think that there's, uh, that maybe there's just a little bit more of like, this is also sort of crazy, like filming these big musical numbers and wearing masks and taking off your mask and all, you know, and there might just be a, a little bit more of a feeling of like, we're in this thing together. Um, and and the only people that we really can see or hang out with are each other. So, right. um, uh, but also we just know each other better now. And uh, I think that there's more of a sense of like, okay, we know what the show is and we all feel, you know, just uh, more comfortable in, in some way. Like these people, I know these people better now, you know? Right. So let's talk about David. You're now into, more into season two. Um, episode four just came out. And David has really been the rock of the family with trying to keep everything together. But episode four is really David's turn to not only break down a little bit, but have a breakout moment with his own solo in the courtroom. So what was that experience like filming that specific it? moment? I did, I got to see it today. It. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I haven't seen it, um, but <laughs> it's good that you have. Um, I'm excited to see it. It was, um, I mean, anytime you get to do a, a musical number, it's just a blast, you know, it's, it's so much fun. And they're all, they all present such different challenges. Um, 
that one was extremely challenging because we're in, in an actual courtroom, you know, where you don't, you can't be, you can't practice in there until the day. So you don't know what the carpet's going to be like. You don't know what your shoes are going to feel like on the carpet. Um, I add to that, it was the thing we did at the very end of the day. So everybody's tired. Everyone wants to get out of there. And there's like enormous amounts of pressure to like, to deliver. And then you're, you know, on top of that, you're lip syncing. And then there's a baby there and the baby, you know, this, the music can't be turned too loud because the baby will get upset. But also if the music's too low, it's hard to like lip sync to because you feel like very naked and vulnerable uh, that like, you know, you're well, because by the way, in real life, it would be very difficult to, to do the movement that I'm doing and sing at the same time. Right. So, yeah. um, so I still have to sing to lip sync, right. I still have to be singing. So it's also like, if you turn the music down, it's not going to, it's going to sound like me, huffing, and puffing, <laughs> right. You know, so, so that creates another set of weird circumstances. Um, but, uh, you know, that one in particular was difficult because of the song. I'd never sung a song like that. And also because of the, um, that was just so much of like a, you know, a, a rock anthem, I guess, to some degree. But um, on top of that, the, the style of movement and, uh, but it, preparing for it was just so much fun because it just was such a challenge. And the dance, you know, the dance team, we have, you know, Mandy Moore and uh, Jillian uh, and uh, Jeff, who are their, her associates, and um, uh, they are so patient with us and they really like, they really like, it's like kind of, it's just like, it's such an amazing part of the process because, uh, you know, it reminds me of being, you know, a kid and going to dance classes, you know, right. or to, which we'll, you know. we'll get to that in a second, but with the rehearsal process, how far ahead are you rehearsing musical numbers for the next part of the season? It depends. So we're about to shoot um, a number on Monday that we have only had two rehearsals for, and it was, it's very complicated and it involves like waltzing and like, stuff that um and like lift they have to lift and you know dip and all this stuff and um and it's like a, with probably 30 people in the number so uh tomorrow morning we we shoot that and so like tonight the my partner my uh you know wife in the show um my dance partner is kind of we're gonna have to get together like you know on our own to like to make sure that we're ready for this because um so sometimes there's that little preparation for the courtroom for I Want to Break Free, there was probably maybe five, I'd say five rehearsals. Um, but you know, you're going, you're trying to learn, do it by yourself too and learn it. And um, and it's normally, it's a kind of okay if they're gonna cut, right? If they can mm -hmm. cut, it's not the end of the world. But in a lot of these, they do try to get them in one shot. And then that, that pressure is enormous because even if you do a perfect, for all you know, they got out of focus at some point, or right. the lip sync was a little bit off, or you know, there's you know, there's so many different where the baby didn't look right, or whatever it is. Um, so there's so many, so so it's, it varies widely, but I'd say I'd say normally like the most you would get is five rehearsals, and then this one's a really this one's a really short process, the one we're about to film. Yeah, I love I love the stopping for the baby not looking right. That may be one of my new favorite things that happens <laughs> on a TV show. Yeah. Um, so fun fact, you and I actually grew up performing musical theater together down in Florida. Yeah. So, uh, which is a crazy full circle moment for the two of us, but has it been fun to return to your musical theater roots? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, yeah, so we, we in, in Clearwater, Florida, I yep. guess, or Largo, I don't know where, but uh, where we exactly were, but we, we were in a uh, uh, musical theater, like group, group at the community center. We did by yep. the bird. Did we do other shows together? I remember Bye Bye Birdie. I think we did Tumbleweeds together. Oh, Tumbleweeds, I think, sure, of course, Tumbleweeds. I think there was, <laughs> uh, there's got to be a slew of shows we did together besides those two. Yeah, well, I mean, I was, I, you know, I, because I was, when I did, but when we did Bye Bye Birdie, I'd come back from, at that point, I think I'd done Les Mis. Yep. Gone tour Les Mis and come back. And then Tumbleweeds, I feel like, was before that. I think so. So maybe there were some other ones before that. But I think you're a little, you're younger than I am. So I think that, um, I feel like, yeah, maybe there was some other overlap, but anyway, you know, that was like, that was my childhood and yours too. And it was like a, yeah. an amazing thing. And we had these amazing teachers, Gidget Cross, and I don't know, did Jason Fortner ever teach you? Yep. Um, all of those people. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing. It, it was, uh, um, it was an amazing, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, they really 
they gave me so much, you know, they put so much of themselves into, into teaching us. It was really uh, incredible. I'm so appreciative. Of it. And so, yeah. So for me, like growing up, like I loved, I just loved musicals. I loved doing them. And I got, I had the opportunity to do, you know, Les Mis and uh, falsettos and Les. some other things. And, um, and then I started doing more TV and film and then I went to college and then it just seemed like very unattainable in a lot of ways. Um, and I think it is, I think it's really hard. You know, I think it's a very, it's very, very hard to get a Broadway show or, you know, um, and, uh, and also even if you get a Broadway show, can you make a living doing a Broadway show? I mean, who knows, right? Um, and so when this came along, Austin Winsberg, who created it is, is a friend of mine. And he also uh, wrote the book for the musical First Date, which mm -hmm. was on maybe five years ago or something four years ago and um you know it's sort of like I mean a, basically a dream come true I mean I couldn't I couldn't ask for anything more this is exactly what uh uh this is basically like getting to do a musical uh getting to a musical and getting paid for it the only downside is that I don't get to do it in front of an audience which is I, where I prefer to do it on a stage in front of an audience I've been really lucky the last five years because I've been in um uh, this sketch comedy group called the Groundlings in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to uh, do musical improv there. And I've been able to write my own little, uh, little musicals that I do like perform as they're like sketches basically, but they're longer than the sketch should be. But um, so I've been able to write these musicals and perform them there. And that's been an absolute like blast and so much fun and thrilling. And, um, but this is, you know, in terms of like having a job, especially during a pandemic where you, there's no musicals to be done on stage, this is a pretty, I mean, this is like, this is one in a billion. I mean, I don't, I don't think this really exists. So I'm, I'm, I feel very grateful, you know? Well, and I, I think it definitely serves a purpose, not just for the storylines, but the fact that we don't have musicals right now and we get to tune in every week to see basically a 60 minute musical has been wonderful, not just for me, who's a fan, but I think everybody else who tunes in too, because you get to see you and Skylar and Alex and all of these musical theater Broadway stars be able to perform right in their living room, which has been wonderful. Oh, that's, that's nice. I mean, yeah, no, for me, I get to go see, I get to like watch Skylar and Alex perform. It's like unbelievable. Like, yeah, I get to go watch them do their numbers. It's like, it's incredible. They're incredible. And then Bernadette Peters last year, uh, you know, getting to see her was, I mean, unbelievable. Um, and, Peter Gallagher, uh, I gotta say, oh, Peter with Gallagher. Him. I mean, for me, that was like to me, the, like my favorite moment of last season probably was getting to do um, the Billy Joel song with him in the finale. Because when I was doing falsettos on Broadway, he was in the theater next door doing Guys and Dolls, and I thought like that's like he's you know that's P uh, Peter Gallagher, like that's like right. you know. So then to get to sing with him was uh, you know was pretty a pretty amazing experience. So yeah, I could only imagine, and so with David, can you give us any little tidbits of what's in store? David's going through some new, some new things. He's going to be a stay at home dad and he's yeah. got to figure out what the next step is. So any well, little I think, tidbits? I think David's a little bit like Pippin actually. He kind of doesn't know what his corner of the sky is. And he's, um, I think he, you know, he's probably, he was, you know, he's a, a good lawyer, but I don't think it's like necessarily his passion, but he was good at it. So he did that. He thought he was supposed to do it. Um, and, uh, it's nice to see, it was nice, it's nice now that he's no longer a lawyer. I think he thinks he's going to find that fulfillment in staying home with his child. And, um, but we're going to find out pretty soon that that's not, that's not, that's not either. That's not it either. So um, uh, hopefully it won't end like Pippin does uh, or like, <laughs> but, um, or that they, how they would want Pippin to end. But, uh, but um, yeah, so I think he's going to, he, he's going to try a few other things. Um, and uh, and we're going to explore his relationship with Emily, which was uh, exciting. And um, and yeah, it's good. I, I, I definitely am really excited about I'm excited about some of the musical things that I get to do coming up is they're all so, so, so different. They couldn't be more different. Anything that's rooted in some Broadway show tunes for you, maybe? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Those are they're, they're hard to put Broadway show tunes on the show because they're, you know, Austin, you know, can't always do that. He feels like, because it's so tied to a character and a story already. Right. So, you know, it's a little, it's dicey, you know. Um, I almost got to sing part of your world from The Little Mermaid. No <laughs> way. Everybody, every, pretty much everybody deemed that to be a bad idea. So, um, 
but it changed into something else, which is a great song. There is a song I have coming up that I'm really excited about that, um, that I th I'm hopefully going to be able to sing it live, I hope, because that I was able to do that with Peter last year with the Billy Joel song. And I just, it takes so much yeah. of a, it allows you to actually, you know, really maybe be more free and things like that. But, um, and I feel like it's not a musical theater song, but to me, it feels the most musical theater to me in that it just in the lyrics and, and sort of what it's trying to communicate and, um, mm -hmm. and I just, it's a song that I love. And so I'm just really, I, I feel like that to me is like, uh, I thought maybe it was gonna happen early in the season uh, when I was talking to Austin, but I, then I thought it wasn't gonna happen. And then through some like fluke, something, you know, something shifted with the, where the rights were held. And so ultimately it, it came true. And so I'm, I'm really just, I'm just thrilled about that. So, but I can't so say before I let you go, I have to ask about your Instagram networking series with Jeffrey David Denman. Yeah, yeah. How did that whole thing come to be? Um, so that was a, so I that was a character that I played at the Groundlings in a sketch, and the sketch is basically him. He's basically crashed a, a rap party of a movie. <laughs> And he's his cousin, like was a PA on the movie, and said you can come to this rap party. And he's he won't stop harassing people about getting him an agent or a manager, and any number of other things that he needs, uh, you know. Um, and so, I feel like at some point, I don't know when. I guess it was early on in the pandemic. I don't know. I really don't know how it came about, but I think I just thought like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if it would be fun to interview people as him. And so I did it first with this guy named Milo Mannheim, who's a really talented actor. He's Cameron Mannheim's son, and he's just awesome and so nice. And I was like, you would try this with me and see how it goes. And we did it. And what was really fun about it was seeing how many people were, how many people of his, how many of his fans that were watching thought I was a, it thought I was real and also thought right. I was just the most terrible, hor horrendous person uh, that they'd ever seen. Um, and then I don't know. It just, you know, I, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bunch more of them. I, I just haven't, uh, they take a lot of energy and they, and it hurts my face. <laughs> <laughs> I will say when Jeffrey says, you know, the party with all the shrimp, I may have lost my mind because it's just, <laughs> you know, these people, like these people actually exist. So I just, Wait, who it did was I say my that favorite. To? Um, uh, it was one of the, oh. the very first episodes. Um, oh God, the actor from Downton Abbey. Oh, Alan, Alan Leach. Alan, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, all the shrimp. The party with all the shrimp was my favorite. Oh, all the shrimp, yeah. Um, but it's fun. It's like, it's a little scary because it's like, I don't know what's going to happen a lot. Of, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And also it's a fine line because not that he's a, I think he's actually very well-intentioned, the character. And I think he's a nice person, but he, he can sometimes say things that are offensive. And so it's always like, how do I navigate not actually offending the person? And I don't, and I don't want to even, I don't, he, I have to believe as Jeffrey that nothing I'm saying is offensive too. So I can't right. have to like, you know, um, but he is a little bit offensive, I think. <laughs> I mean, again, we all know this person, like these people actually do exist in the world of entertainment. So I find it very highly comical. So yeah, I, uh, Sky, Skyler always talks about, he's like, I know, I know that guy. Like I know him. Um, I'm going to interview Skyler pretty soon. Uh, and I am going to get, I am going to get Mary Steenburgen pretty soon. So I'm excited about that. Um, and that, that excites me. <laughs> it's, been a long, it's been a long road, but I think we're, I think we're almost, I think we've almost got her. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I'm going to try to do it more because I, I, it's, it's fun for me to do and, and uh, you know, why not? But, uh, but yeah. Well, Andrew, thank you for taking the time to join us for iHeartRadio Broadway. Uh, this week's episode for Zoe, uh, the Extraordinary Playlist is on Tuesday. This interview will be out the next day. So I, can't recommend the show any further. There's always extraordinary playlist on NBC. Please watch. I appreciate it. Yeah, please watch and go back and watch episode four because it's a good one. And then there's some real, like, there are some great episodes in this this season. I think it's really like, I'm really excited about what's coming up. So perfect. Andrew, thank right. you so, so much. Good to see you. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing.